Hello, and welcome to the podcast about botulism. Today, we're going to dive on deep and talk about what botulism is and ways to prevent you and your loved ones from getting botulism. So to start off, the disease was first identified in 1895 by Emily Pierre Van Ermengem, a professor of bacteriology. What is botulism? Botulism is a type of food poisoning that's not commonly seen. It's caused by Clostridium botulinum, which affects the nervous system and can cause paralysis. It's also found in nature and is a very potent toxin. So some signs and symptoms to look out for are double vision, blurred vision, drooping eyelids, slurred speech, difficulty swallowing, dry mouth, muscle weakness, or muscle paralysis, which is a severe sign and symptom. It can also affect infants, so they will appear tired, they might feed poorly, they might be constipated, cry weak, or show poor muscle tone. So, before we get started, I want to leave us with a little joke. So, make sure that your beans are sterilized so you don't become paralyzed. For epidemiology, we looked at both incidence and mortality of botulism, both globally and in the U.S., Incidence refers to the occurrence of new disease, new cases of a disease in a certain population over a given period of time. Mortality refers to the number of deaths from a particular disease. According to the CDC, the U.S. incidence is an average of 110 cases annually. Of these 110 cases, 70% are from infant botulism, 30% are from wound, and 25% are from foodborne. Infant and foodborne botulism incidence has stayed about the same throughout the years, but we are seeing an increase in wound botulism, which is getting worse because of IV drug use. Mortality-wise in the U.S., in 2017, there was a 0% mortality rate for infant botulism, 19% for foodborne botulism, and 0% for wound. According to the Ministry of Health of Ontario, Canada, the global incidence is about 1,000 cases each year. This rate has gone down slightly over the years. And according to the World Health Organization, the global mortality rate for botulism can be between 5 to 10 percent of cases in foodborne, 15 to 17 percent of cases for wound, and less than 1% of cases in infant botulism. So now that we know a little bit more about botulism, let's talk a little bit about how this is spread. So there's three different ways that this can be spread. Foodborne, from a wound, or itrogenic, which is from injecting botulism toxins into the skin for cosmetic or medical uses. Its mode of transmission is vehicle-borne. So we recommend that you should cook your food up to temperature clean those wounds, and make sure that you're limiting the amount of Botox you are getting. To help us understand the pathophysiology of the disease, I will first read the medical definition and then I will break it down into a little more simple terms. Botulism is an acute neurological disorder that causes potentially life-threatening neural paralysis due to a neurotoxin that binds irreversibly to the presynaptic membranes of peripheral neuromuscular, and autonomic nerve junctions. What this means is that botulism is a neurotoxin, so that means that it is harmful to our nerves, and it causes acute neurological disorder that can lead to potentially life-threatening neuroparalysis. This means that it can damage our nerves by paralyzing them, and if left untreated, can result in death. Botulism does this by irreversibly binding to the presynaptic membranes of peripheral neuromuscular and autonomic nerve junctions, which are responsible for muscle contraction. So that means that not only does it affect the muscles that allow us to move parts such as our face, arms, and legs, but it can also lead to paralysis of the muscles we use to breathe, for example. This disease process is why botulism infection can result in death if left untreated or if treatment is delayed. So let's say that you're a frequent food canner and you acquire botulism. What will your treatment look like? 
People with botulism will have to be treated in the hospital with antitoxins. While in the hospital, you will receive excellent nursing and physician care, sometimes in an intensive care unit and sometimes with the support of a ventilator to assist breathing in more severe cases. Now let's say that you have botulism and do not seek treatment. What is that going to look like? Well, first you will suffer from irreversible paralysis and eventually death. It's important to seek treatment immediately because the antitoxin given in the hospital will prevent the toxin from doing any further harm, but is not able to heal the paralysis that has already occurred to the body. As far as universal precautions go, botulism is not able to be spread from person to person. So while somebody is being treated in the hospital setting, no special precautions will need to be taken by medical staff. It is safe to assume standard precautions while caring for these patients. The primary role of the public health nurse is to prevent botulism through patient education, which would be our primary prevention strategy. Some teaching that would be important to include would be to teach patients to use proper canning techniques, which can be found on the National Home of Food Preservation website. And according to foodsafety.gov, some more important teaching is to not give infants under the age of 12 months honey, to boil home canned foods before eating them, to not eat out of bulging containers, and to not even taste test to see if it tastes okay, to use pressure canners for low acid foods, such as potatoes and most other vegetables and meat, refrigerate any canned or pickled foods after opening, and to prevent wound botulism, it's important to teach patients to keep wounds clean and to keep a close eye on them. And to prevent iatrogenic botulism, patients should only receive Botox injections from licensed practitioners. Secondary prevention would include early recognition of botulism, so that's paying attention to symptoms. So some symptoms we need to watch for would be vision changes, difficulty talking and swallowing, and then in infants, changes such as lethargy, poor feeding, and decreased muscle tone. It's also important to monitor wounds and make sure they aren't showing signs of infection, like redness, swelling, heat, pain. And for tertiary prevention, the nurse should provide treatment needed to take care of the botulism. This would include the antitoxins we talked about earlier in the podcast, and it also includes symptom management. So this might be providing oxygen therapy if the patient is having trouble breathing, and also assisting with ambulation if the patient has weakness, and just any other signs and symptoms they might be having, just closely monitoring them and providing symptom management. With an emphasis on patient teaching of safe food practices, how to care for wounds, and how to safely receive a Botox injection, botulism can be easily prevented. So now that we have gave you all of our information about botulism during this podcast, we wanted as a group to just kind of key in on some key features. So we wanted to make sure that you guys are aware that this is not spread person to person. It's spread through a vehicle born Um, bacteria so it's found in canned foods like we've mentioned multiple times so we just want to make sure that we are keeping those canned vegetables or fruits or whatever you're canning safe so after opening them put them in the refrigerator um, making sure that they are in an area where they're going to be able to grow bacteria super rapidly um, and just being safe with our wounds and um, making sure that we're getting education about the type of Botox that we're getting, um, if we're getting them cosmetically or if you're getting them for medical purposes, just making sure that you're asking your doctor, your healthcare provider um, details and making sure that you're aware of what signs and symptoms botulism carries. So like we previously mentioned, making sure that if you're having vision changes or you're slurring your speech or difficulty with swallowing, dry mouth, muscle weakness, paralysis, um, those kind of things, or if you think that your infant has um, potentially had some honey or is experiencing some symptoms of botulism, making sure that um, they aren't feeding poorly, they're not constipated, they're not having a weak cry, poor muscle tone, those kind of things. We just want to make sure 
that we are educating you guys on the signs and symptoms, as well as good teaching points. If you were a public health nurse and you had a patient come in that thinks they had botulism or they are currently experiencing botulism. So educating those patients that enjoy canning their foods on what to expect, how to um, can their fruits and vegetables adequately and safely. So preventing brochures and that kind of thing. Um, and so basically, I think we've gave you all the information that you guys will probably ever need to know about botulism. So with that being said, we're going to head into some discussion questions. We have a couple discussion questions that we feel are things that are important to know about botulism. The first one is what assessments are important for nurses to complete on a patient with botulism? And then the second one is what are important things that we should teach our patients to prevent botulism? For our resources, we used the Center for Disease Control and Prevention website the World Health Organization website, Ontario, Canada, Ministry of Health, foodsafety.gov. And then we also used a PubMed article that talked about the history of botulism.